In 830, the Vikings were rowing up the small river Nanny in the county of Meath on the east coast of Ireland. On board one of the ships, there was a Norse Viking warrior named Thorgust or Turgisius, depending on which annals you read. Thorgust had most likely been involved in raids in Ireland as a warrior for the last decade. He would soon rise to prominence as the fierce Viking chief who wreaked havoc all over Ireland. The Vikings came upon the small village of Dulik, where St. Patrick's Church and St. Mary's Abbey was situated. Dulik began as an early Christian monastic settlement. St. Patrick established a bishopric there about 450. Dulik had not been raided by the Vikings during the 35 years the Vikings had been active in Ireland. I guess they thought their Christian God was watching over them. The Vikings landed their ships on the riverbank at the village waterfront and leaped into action. Now, some of the monks and civilians did fight back with swords. Still, they were no match for the Vikings. One monk thought the cross would protect him. He was wrong. Many of the monks were given the sword for their lack of understanding that their Christian, Jewish God was not their natural God by default of nature. They ransacked the church and the abbey for relics of islands saints. These were often enshrined in richly adorned reliquaries of bronze, silver and gold. They also looked for crucifixes, bowls, candlesticks, cups and mugs. And of course, silver coins that the indoctrinated, brainwashed public gave to the church to be allowed to enter heaven so they could hang out forever with the child-burning God Yahweh and his bastard son Jesus Christ. They took livestock with them as well from the small farms that often was close to monastic settlements. The Vikings had to live off the land. There wasn't a 7-Eleven around the corner where they could just drop by to have a snack. There was a long sail voyage ahead and the Vikings were hungry for some fresh meat. The Vikings rowed their ships back down river again with treasure, fresh meat, chickens and maybe some thralls. Thralls is often linked to slavery. I would rather call it servitude. The rank and file of enemy combatants taken as prisoners would enjoy better living conditions and have more rights and freedom as a thrall in pagan Scandinavia than living under Christian tyranny. Priests and other dignitaries were held for ransom, which could bring in a very handsome pile of silver. Monks were useful for their extensive travel around island from monastery to monastery. They were interrogated and forced to tell the Vikings where they could find other churches and monasteries. They were often used as guides on the Vikings' next raids. Some Vikings might even have found love among one of the widows and the prospect for marriage in the old heathen way, which was a much better deal than a Christian marriage. They then sailed back to their bases in northern Scotland to stash the loot. Now, share, like and subscribe. The gods demands it.